Are you, you guys cool if I just film a thing we're doing a TV show? Is it cool if I film a thing in the hot tub while you're all here? I'm Daniel Decay from Banger TV. I'm on the 70,000 Tons of Metal Cruise for four days interviewing tons of artists, starting with Derek Green from Sepultura. We talk about philosophies on life and music and a mutual love for hardcore. Check it out. Derek, man, thanks for joining me out on the balcony. Thanks for having me. Balcony here, this gorgeous yes. view. View of nothing. Yeah. The open sea. No land in sight. <laughs> I want to uh, get to know you a little bit and kind of talk about the beginnings, how you got into music, you know, the humble beginnings out in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, I believe. Right. Yeah, I mean, for me, music has always been a big part of my life. My mother was a music teacher. Um, and so I would hear music all the time growing up. In school, that's where it really kicked off that possibly I could do something with my voice. I was forced to take a choir class and I was really bummed out about it, but my teacher was emphasizing how great my voice was for the fact that it was baritone bass. And there's not many people that have that, that style of voice. So right. this was something that I started to think about it was great, you know, it was a very positive thing to grow up with, you know, having music in my life, but it started at a very young age. Yeah, like I, you were singing in bands by the time you were 15 years old. Right. right? So like, wh where does that transition at what, what point do you really start getting into the music and the bands? I think going to shows was really, you know, the most influential thing. Um, some of the first shows I saw were Bad Brains and, and Cro-Mags, um, and it had a huge impact. I mean, being 14, 15 years old and seeing so much energy on stage and with the audience and people moving, it was just something I'd never seen before. Also at the time, there were, you know, had a big impact was uh, Cro-Mags, uh, just for the fact that this band were vegetarians and they had reading material about uh, being a vegetarian. And so this kicked it off for me to really sample and experiment with this. And it stuck with me, you know, this lifestyle of being a vegan actually. Did you ever dabble in like uh, the hardcore straight edge type thing or was it always just about being a vegan? No, I mean it was definitely, I, in high school I never drank, I never smoked. I guess you would call it straight edge for sure. But I, I mean I didn't want to become so like radical, you know, to each his own. Right. But it was something that was really good for me, you know. I watched so many people around me getting completely screwed up. And that was boring for me. I was really into going to shows, skating. I loved sports as well, you know, and so this combination had no space really for, you know, boozing and doing a lot of drugs. It seems that family is really important from the influence of your mom mm -hmm. to uh, your first record you named after your dad. Right. Has fa <laughs> family always been a huge, a huge important role uh, in Absolutely. your life? Absolutely. They were extremely positive role models, but they were very supportive you know, and everything that I pursued, even though they didn't really understand everything about hardcore or punk rock, and they actually were at a Sepultura show, you know, like front row, you know, and they just didn't even realize there was gonna be a pit there, but the fans were just like, maybe you wanna step back a little bit, and, but they were just like really happy to see so many people into the music, into what I was doing. So, at a certain point uh, in your teen years, you leave, Cleveland right. and you go to New York and you hook up with some uh, pretty heavy hitters in the, the New York <laughs> hardcore scene. How did you kind of get immersed in, into that world and what, what did that kind of do for you? Well in Cleveland I had this band Outface for such a, like probably about eight or nine years. Um, I moved to New York with the guitarist Charlie Gariga but then he started to play in another band called Civ and I ended up just doing my own thing trying to make everything work. Um, and that's when I did this audition for Sepultura. But I, I worked in various jobs there, like still doing music, but at the same time I was a door guy, I worked at a clothing store, I was a yeah, bodyguard, I mean I did everything that I could, um, but at the same time still pursuing music. Did the focus ever shift from hardcore and punk into more of like a heavy metal focus in your life, or is hardcore and punk always reigned supreme? Um, it, I think hardcore and punk has always reigned supreme, but I think metal became more interesting when there were, uh, the lyrical content started to change with certain bands. And um, I felt, I mean, there were certain bands that just always had an impact in, in the metal, like as far as metal, you know, Slayer, Celtic Frost, you know, these were bands that was just like, wow, you know, 
even in the hardcore scene, I was like, this is incredible. And with Sepultura, I thought it was great. For me, I got really into it on the Arise album, and they start to develop a little bit more of their own personality yeah. in the music that you can hear. Um, and the lyrical content was getting better and better. Being a, a young guy growing up uh, listening to heavy metal and punk and hardcore, genres predominantly white male right. dominant, who were your role models? Was there was there anyone that you looked up to that you could relate to better, perhaps on a lyrical level or mm -hmm. from where they came from? I was really into hip hop. You know, at the same time, I got into hardcore and punk rock because they're kind of hand in hand. They weren't being played on the radio. They were completely rebellious. Um, the lyrical content of, of of a lot of hip hop, like uh, KRS One, was always like amazing to me. And Public Enemy. I mean, their understanding of the language is fascinating you know and they're masters at it and so this for me was genius you know it really had such a strong impact I, I definitely looked up to the, to them and bands like Bad Brains like I said was like blew my mind you know they would go from reggae to like hardcore you know but do it very well and they were amazing musicians so that combination you know really had a, a strong impact on me You guys are fucking amazing, thank you very much! So there's been so many amazing bands, so many amazing people from around the world here. This has been a wonderful cruise. What's the food like, like veg being a vegetarian on, on the boat here? Like yeah, there's a, there's a vegan corner. <laughs> uh, I guess a lot of people complained in the past that there wasn't enough options. Okay. So you'd be surprised, there's a lot of vegans on the boat. I mean, Millie from Creator is a vegan. There's Doyle from Misfits, he's a vegan as well. I mean, a lot of people in this scene, you know, John Joseph of cro yeah. he's a vegan. The list goes on, I think things are changing. I think it, it ties into a whole bigger issue too about taking care of the world that feeds us. I Absolutely. Mean, the, the style of farming that we're doing, it's just, it does not help the end goal, which is to, you know, keep mother nature and keep the earth alive. Really. Stay in the cycle, you know, yeah. it's like to work with everything else. I mean, we're the only species that creates trash, you know, on this entire planet. It's just really odd, you know, that we can't get it together, even though we're supposed to be the smartest right. species on this planet, but at the same time, we're almost like a cancer on the planet. Right. And so it's time to really, you know, practice what we preach.